Ah, that's such a nice old announcement. To so yeah. <laughs> and yet it's been a while. Yeah, that announcement from Zoom saying recording is in progress. Mm -hmm. I used to spend so much time on Zoom. It was it was basically my work. But was was that at six feet up? A lot of time in meeting. Well, it was one hundred percent remote, right? And we were not yeah. only we working remotely with headquarters, but then we had developers all around the world, including in your home country. Yeah, but, but we'll get to that in a bit. So uh, okay. I want to I want to introduce everyone to John Jordan on the Plone Podcast. John Jordan is an old friend of mine. Well, old in the sense that we've been friends a long time, not necessarily old. <laughs> No, nah, man, we're old. <laughs> old, old, aged, aged, grizzled, experienced, yeah. hopefully a little bit wiser. Hmm. Mm, yeah, a little questionable there. <laughs> Been around the block a few times in here, in here, right? Yeah, sometimes dragged around the block. Yeah. Uh, your t-shirt is reminding me, of course, of Calvin's uh, pants swapping around the block, around the hotel. Oh, yeah. I think it was in front of the uh -huh. hotel, but uh, another one of those episodes immortalized in photography, <laughs> clandestine photography. There was at least one time out in the street in front of a restaurant as well. In Bristol? No, no, it wasn't in Bristol. It was somewhere else, but I'm, 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 I'm vague now. I'm where? Yeah, well, it's happened, I think, at every conference that he's been to, which is pretty much all of them, I think. Yeah. So yeah, so we're uh, we're back, and uh, you can see we're sporting our John and I were just talking about our paraphernalia, our plown paraphernalia. So I have this uh, medallion that my friend Brian Ledwell made. I th I'm not sure why, because we never actually handed it out for the plown symposium in Oshkosh, but yet I still have it. And you can see I decided to wear this instead of my t-shirts. But yeah, the plown conference in Bristol. Uh, you know what, John? I was gonna say I don't remember you being there. Oh, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one of the one of the many places that I that I only went to because of Plum. Um, that Plum really pushed me to uh, travel to travel to places that I would never never otherwise have gone. Yeah, that's that's very much the same for me. Uh, it's been wonderful to have the opportunity to to. Go to places that sometimes a little bit off the beaten path. Um, I wouldn't say Bristol is an unknown city. It's a very important city. But, it, you know, when you're a tourist and you're coming to the UK, do you start off in Bristol? You get to Bath. Many people go to Bath and Stonehenge, oh, yeah. which is along the way. But And, of course, ironically, I went to Bristol, but I still have not seen Bath nor Stonehenge. Yeah, me neither. Um, my, my, my brother... Um commuted past on it at, at some point and um and, and he's been to Bath a number of times but not me i just go there to visit him in london so um do my, you my, remember... my main memory my main memory of bristol is, is christian lederman snoring <laughs> <laughs> oh my well I was, gonna, I was i was gonna say so you were giving me grief because i didn't remember if you were in Bristol, because obviously we're hanging around with different crowds at that, uh, certainly at that conference, but so yeah. you don't remember that much yourself. So I, I you know, pot calling it kale black. You know, <clears throat> no, uh, totally. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, not a, not a, not the best candidate for, for uh, retrospective podcasts because um, I really don't have a, a good detailed memory of, of, of past events. I sort of live in the present. <laughs> I remember epochs. <laughs> well, yeah, I was just thinking about when we're we're you know as as one of the things we do um, with the Plone Podcast, we exchange some initial thoughts about what we might talk about. And one of the things I I was reflecting on was that the Plone conferences are, well, maybe I'm mixing metaphors, but they're like landmarks on my life's timeline. Mm. Memorable, really memorable events, yeah. and and. As you say, we get to visit all sorts of places around the world that, that are, it's it's a great reason to have to travel. Darn, I have to go to yeah. another phone conference. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's it's this um, sort of uh, uh, 
juncture of the year, there's this, this, this uh, turning point of the year every year. And every year you have to sort of figure out how you're going to get to it this time. Um, where's, the, where's the funds going to come from? Where's the time going to come from? Uh, uh, in uh, representing what organization are you going to go? Um, <laughs> and as, as such, looking back, I mean, there was, um, I was, there was, uh, right at the start, it was um, completely just um, doing it on my on 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 my own behalf, our our own behalf. That was the Seattle one. Um, later on, there was um, the UN era when um, uh, uh, Christine and uh, Damaris and 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 Christian um, and some of the US UN crowd joined. That was, wow. uh, for example, in Vienna. It was one of those. Right. Um, and. And then um, quite a bit later again, it was it was um, t- uh, Thailand um, when I was working for a, um, a company unrelated to Plone or Python, but um, they uh, saw what I was getting out of, out of it, and they they were sponsoring me to go. Um, that was, for example, to Tokyo and and um, ah yes, the company that. where you were using Orchard CMS. That's it. That's correct. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, well. All right. So you mentioned Tokyo, and I was gonna say, well, I have I have my my <laughs> here, here. Okay, so the, the the other thing to say, probably just to set the tone correctly for this particular interview, is that John is in Bangkok, and I am in undisclosed location in a bunker, but um, twelve hours time difference. So it is morning for John, and it is evening for me, and that's why Monday morning. Yes, <laughs> and instead of working you're talking to me <laughs> yeah right so, yeah it's a, it's right. a good so start in the, spirit, the in the spirit of of uh tokyo remembering tokyo i was just watching re-watching the movie lost in translation again uh have you seen it i have <clears throat> so yes ah aha what is that sake <laughs> no 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 it's 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 rice wine it's not actually Japanese, ah, but it's a nice oh, yeah. uh, exotic bottle. So in the spirit of uh, the, the movie Lost in Translation, you may recall the, the tagline uh, with, what is it? With friends, good friends, make it Suntory time. Uh, I guess I should. Yeah, They're yeah, not yeah. a sponsor of this show. <laughs> not a sponsor at all. But uh, this glass, which you can see. Oh, is, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. yes. I remember. I, I remember that place is the is one of the sponsors of the Plon conference in Namur which was just last last October and uh, uh we I kept the glass which is very nice so anyway cheers <laughs> to your Monday morning <laughs> hard liquor and by uh, hmm. yeah I'm uh, <laughs> I'm gonna let you do it <laughs> so John one of the things that um I guess there it's been a really interesting experience for me to be able to talk to plonistas and uh, some still current and some you know who moved on but to be Emerita. able to talk to yeah, man, yes exactly to to talk to plonistas who have just been part of the community and given so much back to the community who've been in and around the community who have interesting ideas to share all the time like you do and um one of the things i wanted to remind uh everyone who's listening is that we've had a, a, I guess it's at least a couple of generations if you want to call it that of turnover in the plum community we had our original founders and we had a group of people who were heavily involved invested in the plum community and they've moved on and then i don't know if i would consider myself like a third generation but now there's a new generation of of plum leaders and just taking charge of the foundation board and teams and installers and deployment and all the development that goes into it. Um, but I did also want to, one of the reasons why I find it so fun to talk to planistas is to dig back into the past a little bit and just explain a little bit more of the context around some of the things that we've done and why we've done them and, and some of the thought that went into decisions that we made. And uh, the one I'm remembering in particular is that you and I, the, the, the time I remember really meeting you and talking to you clearly <laughs> was mm. in Bucharest in 2015. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully you remember that. But anyway, it, it was the conference that 
uh, started off the tradition of having training included in the conference. And it was the reason why uh, those two classes that I remember, there was Mastering Plone, there was a Theming Plone class that that uh, at least at least those two, maybe others were offered. And I think you and I met in the Mastering Plone, uh, the, the Theming class. Uh, and it was packed, packed. It was a big classroom and it was just packed. And it was uh, eye-opening for the organizers to realize that this is indeed the big draw for Plone conferences. It's the reason yeah. why a lot of people can justify the expense of traveling and then the stay and, and the hotel, mm. the, the, the conference itself is always inexpensive, but that package <clears throat> deal of getting the training included was a, a big draw and it has continued to be, but 2015 mm. Bucharest was the first year we did that. And, and in the class, instead of paying attention to the training, you and I, got off on a tangent about IRC because we were griping about IRC. And, and well, at least I was because uh, I was spending a lot of time on it and I was trying to get people help that they needed or questions answered. And I tried to track who was asking a question that wasn't getting answered and how to help them. And then we got talking about, oh, maybe we should just switch to Slack or something. And I think it was you, you were gung ho for Slack, weren't you? Yeah, it was that was the, um, the the start of my um, uh, sort of capitulation. I, I I would say when I started to recognize that um, as, as these these tech behemoths um, just um, started steamrollering everything else, um, and um, just thinking in terms of 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 um, reach and and. Um, um, availability, accessibility, um, it um, dwarfed everything else. And things like uh, IRC came came along with 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 a generation of people who who grew up with it. Who um, that was that was what they knew. Um, but um, every time inflicting it on someone um, who hadn't heard of it before was 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 it was, was torture and. Um, just sort of uh, getting it to work for people, just in terms of understanding the the expectations and conventions and things, how you're supposed to um, uh, use it. it was, it's it, it, it's a bit of a losing battle and not really worth the fight. I mean, if you if you're super successful, what if you actually accomplished? You've got someone else onto this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, bailing wire and 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 straw a little text protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, you can build all kinds of stuff on top of it, but it takes a lot of duct tape. Um, and in the meantime, what you want out of something like Slack is minute to minute exchanging ideas, organizing things, referencing messages, linking to stuff, etc. Um, the value accrues with every message that you send, right? Um, you uh, do want to take care that you aren't uh, like shoving everything down the memory hole so you can you ex uh, can you export things can you bridge things and so on and, and you could do that with slack if you really cared about it i mean um just exporting is just a couple of clicks away um if you're if you're on a free plan you need to do it periodically but it's 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 um it's um, not 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 too bad so i i i thought that it's not worth the effort fighting for something like irc and just getting onto something that gets more people talking yeah, and actually, then, I would have. Uh, uh, if, if 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 it could have gone for Zulip, that would have been really nice <laughs> because that's another future-facing thing. Um, but at that point, it wasn't really. I mean, uh, uh, clear that it had legs, and I, it, it seems to have really um, uh, gotten its niche by now, and it's it seems to be solid and sustainable. But it still doesn't have any name recognition. You still have to get people onto it one by one. Onto Slack. Zulip. Z -U -L -I. Zulip. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, what are we yes, yes. Well, okay. So then, so back to in 2015, when you and I were yeah. arguing about what we should do next instead of IRC, and you were pushing heavily for Slack. And I think yeah. either you were, or we somehow you were designated as like the owner of the Slack for a while and the, the plone Slack. And it was, it was yeah, a it's like, you want it so bad, you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, did you just volunteer? Yeah, right. <laughs> classic. <laughs> open source classic volunteer organization. Uh, oh, you brought it up. I guess it's your baby. Yeah. <laughs> but we actually had a disagreement about that because a, a, a number of us were also worried about, okay, Slack is proprietary. What's the visibility of everything that we put into it? And then there was the cost at the time because 
uh, I think we were not on a plan that gave us the 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 full experience, you know, the, the searchability, the history. I think it was a limited experience because, of course, they they needed to make money off it. So we we pushed hard instead for Gitter, and you know we've seen how that's turned out, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah thank you Peter. yeah, yeah and I, I, we, we, we had we had uh slack and gitter bridged as well for for yeah. a long time that's right yeah so we tried hard but i don't think that bridge really ended up adding much it kind of got it i, I kind of got the feeling it was it was mostly ignored well we people had were either on the one or the other we had a three-way bridge we had irc yeah and gitter and slack <laughs> yeah and yeah. of course it just confused everybody because you know, am i supposed to be yeah. which one? What? What's, who are these messages coming from oh oh well yeah but yeah so now of course as you say i think what we're trying to accomplish is with a chat solution we're not trying to make it so that all your questions are going to be answered in the chat because it's hard to answer questions. There's no threading. There's no, no organization yeah. of the conversation. It's very hard to find those search results that are specifically relevant to the thing that you're looking for, the, the question you're looking mm. for. So of course, mm. I just want to make it clear to everyone, the chat service is not what we want everyone to go to for support, but it's a nice, it's a nice tool so that you can stay in touch with people and get to learn who they are and just exchange non non directly plone related questions and just say what are you doing right now oh i'm watching the green bay packers get slaughtered again because of course i'll never make the playoffs um we should but, we should switch to discord next so people can try their crypto as well they're chatting about plone well you know that's that's what we switched to because when gitter started dying right yeah yeah we 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 made the push to get to, to discord and and that's uh, going to what you were trying to say which is what are we trying to accomplish with the tool? And do we want to make it harder for someone to use the tool when really the objective is what is what are we trying to do with the tool? And so kind of yeah, coming totally. to the person as opposed to make having them have to come to us is one of the things is a very important consideration for this many multi multi-year discussion and and thought and and uh, refocusing of where to direct people. It, it, it's an interesting, it's a very small question in the overall universe of what it's like to run an open source project, but it's the kind of thing that you think about. It's like the community's needs. What, who are the people that we're trying to reach out to? Who are we trying to, you know, who are we trying to draw into our, our community and our project? No, I mean, um, communication is, is um really the essence of um, any open source project the, the, i think there's there are, there are there are sort of some um um things where where uh, uh you have um uh, some um uh, protocol or application or where where it's absolutely clear what it needs to do it just needs to be maintained needs to be uh, uh, uh updated from time to time and not much communication is needed but um most projects you're talking about where, what it's supposed to do where it's supposed to go who 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 um who is everyone involved how do they how do they relate and so on um so it um communication is 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 and and, and how you do it is absolutely essential and part of it is the chat part part of it is uh forums is a website um and a lot of it is is um uh uh, editorial presence or um, uh, editing moderation, um, but not, necess not 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 necessarily from um, uh, uh, it, it's it's more community and community standards and um, and conventions how how people mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, um, act um, in, in in that community um, that 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 defines the community and that really determines if it's going to be um it's successful the yeah right right yeah yeah and i mean it takes some um uh there's 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 some kind of editorial um type work that that needs to be done that's also really important um but a lot of it yeah is just um how people act day to day so i was looking at some of the things that we'd uh jotted down notes about and and one of the things oh well okay so uh 
you mentioned the UN crowd that you were working with. Now, can you go back and tell, all right, wait, let's start over at the beginning. How did you get involved with Plone? Because I don't think your, your yeah. background was not in technology. Um, I, 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 uh, I was a computer nerd at, uh, when I was a kid um, with the ZX Spectrum. Um, and um, I eventually got into um, uh, something called white lightning on the Spectrum, which was a fourth variant with some graphics primitives, which was absolutely awesome. And I, and I kind of wish I, I, I went down that rabbit hole further at the time. So when I, when I graduated, um, and I was going to university, I wanted to do computers and my uncles were engineers and they pushed me to do electronic engineering and it was a disaster. So after that, I switched to humanities um, and I, and I um, did a degree in Afrikaans and Dutch. Um, wow. Um, but I was, uh, I was, I was still uh, um, a computer nerd at heart and um, I got myself into the position of, of production manager of some academic journals and, and I was publishing other like desktop publishing type of stuff um, um, and I ended up uh, doing that um, one of the stages in the production was was basically a, a, um, a, a text markup um, language um, um, that uh, you could process into HTML, into, into lots of linked HTML pages. But I was at my little research assistant office doing this um, uh, 12 hours a day um, when I should have been writing a thesis. Um, and <laughs> um, basically looking around for, um, I mean, I, 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 was, I, I wanted to spend my time doing this stuff. Um, and um, I, I knew Rache from, from uh, university and he was running a uh, a, a very um, bohemian style coffee shop called the Blue Okapi, the Blue Okapi at that time. Get out of town. Um, okay, so just for everyone listening, there's Roche Compan. <clears throat> uh, yeah, he's another uh, um, very uh, um, in, in inventive driven um, uh, sharp young guy that I mean, uh, that, uh, that we, we were friends at university. Um, and um, at one point he was running this coffee shop. That's, what, that's, how, we, that's how we connected. But he was also um, uh, running um, uh, or uh, uh, doing uh, so, uh, software development on his own behalf, um, all kinds of software projects. And um, his tool of choice was Delphi. Um, oh, yeah. And there was desktop applications at that time. Um, but Delphi didn't have a brilliant story for the web. Um, and in the, um, I, I actually did quit um, university in the end and went to work for us for, for a startup. And that is, that, that's, that's another story. We can get into that maybe later. Um, but <laughs> after two years there, I actually resigned to join um, Rishai at Upfront Systems. And um, we were going to make a go of it. And we needed to, to figure out how we're going to do this web thing. Um, and I had come across um, uh, Python and um, and Zope, um, and um, uh, Python just fit my brain immediately. Um, and I thought that this is something this is something we can work with. Um, so we were building stuff on Zope for a couple of years, um, and Plone came along, and um, uh, it was it, it was sort of a, a big unwieldy pill to swallow. Um, it, in, in, in Zope, you were in control of every, every little detail. We were using Z patterns. Remember that? Z patterns, Z patterns. Philip Ebby. No, actually, I don't know that. Um, it was a, a, um, a really interesting, I mean, I, I've, I've forgotten the, the, the details, but it was a really interesting um, programming paradigm inside of, 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 of the browser. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, we were doing that and then Plan came around and um, it was this um, unwieldy thing that wanted to do things its own way that it did, that did a certain type of thing um, and that introduced a whole lot of, of um, uh, machinery for managing properties or how you do a theme and uh, what is a content type and so on. Um, there was a lot to swallow, but it was where all the energy was going and it was very well presented. Um, uh, so, um, 
and and um, it, it made it easier to do certain types of projects. And those there, there was there was uh, work for that. There was clients for that. So we just sort of drifted over onto onto Plone. Um, and um, it, it, it's really kind of a shame that Plone turned out to be the one killer app was up. Um, well, mm. there, there was this other um, uh, monitoring, French yeah. monit monitoring yeah. solution thing that's, I think yeah. it's still running on, on Zoop to some extent. What's it called? Mm. Zabbix or something? It's not Zabbix. Uh, but that might, might, it's not that uh, one. I can't remember. Of course, embarrassing. Yeah, I, I know yeah. which one because I, I looked at when I was at the university. I was looking for a monitoring solution. I took a look at that one. We ended up uh, not uh, uh. choosing not choosing it because we didn't put in a monitoring solution. It was more like we don't have time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> properly. Yeah, and, and on that as well, like, um, I, I I feel like um, SaaS services has kind of eaten that. And today, this is a bit of a different topic, but um, I think it's it's very much relevant in the context of Plone is these days um, you can do the most unbelievable things just um, connecting up services to it to 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 your systems and um, you've um, got everything um, getting traced monitored mirrored processed um, synced up um, uh, in a cloud somewhere um, and the expectations for how you get it up and running how you instrument it how you interoperate is um, just in a complete different world from um, a decade or two ago mm -hmm. um, so with with something like this monitoring thing where you um, where it's it's um, it, I, I think I think it's a, it's a much much bigger lift to, to, to sort of fit yourself into into a system like that um, you might that you might be running uh, yourself as well the similar similar thing for plum it's um, um, it, 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 uh, there, there's still never been um, a, a, a plone um, that people could sort of just start using and grow into whatever they needed it to be without um, um, uh, um, working with a, a, a plone implementation team. Right. Yeah. And that 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 idea that you can just launch. Uh, a service you you go to a, a service and you say i want i want to create an account and i want to just mm. have the thing and then boom mm. two seconds later you have your working instance and then you're off to the races mm. that is something that that is doable with plone um, but it's not something that we've really carried super far because i think the vast majority of us are people who enjoy tinkering and we're perfectly comfortable setting up a new server service running on a machine whether it's a uh, hardware uh, at uh, in your building or on your computer or your desktop or laptop, or if it's on a VM that you're provisioning yourself, but but even that uh, having to go create a VM in Amazon or, or Linode or DigitalOcean, that's still something that's alien to the majority of human beings. Mm, yeah. So you you worked with Roche for a number of years, and you worked on clone projects. And and I should Correct. say, Roche. I worked with Roche for a couple, well, several years when we were both at Six Feet Up, and so I, I was really glad to finally get to meet him in person. Well, never in person, but through Zoom all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it was it was a, a, it was joyful for me to get to know him and get uh, to work with him and appreciate him. Yeah, no, he he, he really knew what he was about. Um, he, he he just wanted to get shit done, do cool stuff. Um, that's that's his mission. And, and, he's, and he's, he's, he's still at it. And the other thing that really kills me about you and Roche is that you've got this this accent that just allows you to open doors, <laughs> and people will listen. They'll stop and go, "What? What? That's not an <laughs> American I've never heard accent. That it's actually fascinating. Whatever you say is fascinating." There's a there's another story I can tell you about a reading that Roche did. Uh, I think it was at Christmas time, and everybody loved it. Just I don't know. He could say anything. He could read out the Plone documentation. You know, that's another way. That's another bit of part of the origin story of Minrushe. Like I mentioned, I was publishing stuff when I was studying, and I was putting out poetry magazines for the Afrikaans department and the English department. Um, and, and I was publishing his poems. Uh, well, we're going to have to dig that up. <laughs> it, 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 it's on the web. Um, 
if you if you if you search for Fluchskrif, um on the internet archive the wayback machine you'll find it you're gonna have to tell me how to spell that <laughs> uh f-l-u-g-s-k-r-i-f uh, if people are going to do the take the effort to actually figure <laughs> that out, then, then they can go and find it. So this now I have ideas for you know who who I should invite back to the Plunk podcast next. You know, so Roche would be one, Mike Metcalf. So the three of you, oh, yeah. I've known as the the South African <laughs> contingent, um, and now last year I got to meet uh, the the team from Chuisi, and mm -hmm. so they're for Stellenbosch also, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I, I knew Johan uh, from Juicy, uh, from school days in the Parl, in, in um, the Parl, P-A-A-R-L, um, uh, 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 town with, with, with a couple of big high schools in the, in the Boerland. Um, and he, uh, Juicy has been probably one of the, the, the steadiest um, plone companies in, in, in South Africa that have been um, uh, humming along for, I don't know how long, 30 years. Oh, it's gotta be. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, there's like a second generation uh, there. So 20, 20, 20 plus, 20 plus years. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, we're still angling for a, a plone event in South Africa. Uh, you guys have been like a dead end to me. I mean, I've been trying really nah. hard. <laughs> No, no, um, uh, Mike, is, Mike you're has to invite up us. the wrong tree. Well, yeah, no, you're not you're not local anymore. But uh, yeah. Mike, for example, he's got this huge compound. I mean, he should invite like nah, it's not a hundred of us. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Mike Metcalf. Yes, another. Yeah. Fellow I mean, he's got he's got a, he's got a pretty garden path, but I I I, I don't and and a, and, a, and a little fish dam thingy, but I don't think it it, it qualifies as a compound. <laughs> In my imagination, it's big enough for a big plow and sprint. Well, I, it could probably host you in the in the church hall where they where they do choir practice. Wow. Okay. As long as there's Wi-Fi. <laughs> Must be. So okay. So tell me tell me about the UN project. So UN turned out to be kind of my my my. Um, uh, Departure from South Africa, really. We, we were doing um, some UN projects um, uh, with with Upfront, um, and then uh, they wanted some training done, and I, I started to do a few um, training trips to Nairobi um, at the at the UN offices there, um, doing two or three day um, plan trainings with um, groups of um, about uh, five to ten uh, people. So they had various um, uh, projects that needed to put themselves online and that needed to publish um, structured information at a, at a, um, uh, um, uh, from time to time with um, needed to be able to do it by themselves and so on. Um, uh, so that that way I, I got to uh, to know the, the the people running those projects better um, and um, eventually the. The, the opportunity came to to um, uh, go up there and 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 um, do a project with them on my own behalf because um, so, um, we're looking for someone uh, longer term working more closely uh, for less money. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, um, I I I um, I think that that um, was probably the Bungeni project. Um, which was um, a project to put parliaments in Africa online, um, to um, uh, put all the, the parliamentary uh, records, transcripts, and um, all the documents related to that um, online. Um, I, um, the, the project kind of um, Bit off more than 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 it could chew really, and it was it was involved in like uh, what 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 are the um, XML formats or whatever in which you going you're going to mark up the the Hanser transcripts and stuff all, all stuff like that, and um, they were just taking far too long to get to anything useful that people were actually using, um, and I, I, I ended up um, leaving that after. Um, um, 
couple of years, um, two or three years. Which which branch um, of the UN was that? Um, I can't think now. I'd, I'd have to go and I think it was no, I can't. I can't. UNDP maybe. I can't think. But UN, the, UNDP, the, the, right? Our, our, the, the no. first, the first, my first involvement was was UNEP, United Nations Environmental Project. Um, Bungeni was something different. I forget now what it was. Um, after Bungeni, um, I jumped ship again, and and um, a, a, a friend of mine um, told me of a of a well, that, that he he was he was with a company in Singapore at the time, and they needed a technical writer. Um, and um, my wanderlust had been had been ignited, uh, so I went mm -hmm. to Asia. Um, uh, but then after a couple of years there, I got back in touch with the, with the UNEP crowd. Um, and I started working, um, with them in Bangkok. Um, uh, that was on the IW Learn International Waters Learning and Resource Network. Um, that was with Christine, um, uh, uh Christine Custodio, um, managing the process and, and, and Richard Cooper, um, also, um, uh, sort of leading it on a technical side. That was that was that was really probably the my my um, um, most sort of enduring hardcore flown period of of of, of working because um, that that kind of really hit the sweet spot. Um, at at, um, at UNEP originally there were a couple of of um, um, projects um, who wanted to put specific things on 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 online, but with um, IW Learn, um, there were all these UN-funded projects working on um, on on international waters, dotted all around the world, and all of them had publishing requirements. That had to publish news, they uh, were doing mapping. They had to publish um, uh, uh, maps of of various kinds. They needed to uh, organize. Uh, Publish meetings, um, organize things, and so on. Um, so we could, we 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 basically um, were a, a boutique, plone based web hosting service, spinning up really feature rich sites for these people um, at a moment's notice, taking care of backups, training, everything. And we were a staff of like uh, five or six people, um, uh, say three people, um, really uh, uh, um, technical. Um, and I mean that 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 just kept on working, just kept on humming along. But I think partly what what made it um, uh, problematic in the long term, term is that it, it was it was it was too cheap, really. Um, on the on the, no, the oh, sorry, this is this is this is just like my uh, opinion now. Okay, no, no, no uh, this, but... I'm I'm laughing <laughs> because it sounds totally insane. But no, I'm very interested to hear why you why, why basically you... being the being the boss of this thing at the UN didn't give you any status or clout. You know, you were you were the boss of this a tiny little thing with 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 um, uh, you know, there's enough budget to to um, have to you know to 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 take up cycles and mind share and other people want to take it away from you and whatever, but it's not enough to um, you know, uh, get you like international club. business right. trips and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, oh, I, I so, that... so we're back to the organizational power is equivalent to yeah. the size of your budget. Uh, yeah. I kind of got that feeling. Um, that's amazing and... that a small team like that can help manage so much. I mean, it, it was, um, uh, I mean, look, 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 looking back, I'm, I'm like, wow, that was, that, was, that, was, that was quite impressive. But at the time, um, it was just uh, uh, the, 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 the daily job, getting things done. Um, and, um, you know, Plone doesn't really, um, it, w w once you've got things set up nicely, you've got sites uh, set up and running and so on, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to, uh, uh, Break down. It just keeps on hang, uh, keeps on humming along. Um, if you if you need to do some um, migration or cleanup or whatever, you can do your research, get to it, do it um, um, in a in a considered way, and 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 um, do it in a safe way, and 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 and, and you're done. So yeah, that, that was um, uh, it, it was a very dependable, manageable system for sure. So, how, what years were you working there for for that particular time period? Uh, that must have been 
um, between 2010 and 2015, 2016, mm. part of that time I was also um, working on a, a different um, uh, UN project. Um, toward, I mean, uh, the, the first part of that period I was working specifically with IWL full full time, and then uh, later I was I was doing some other some other UN contracts um, on my own behalf again. That, that um, um, towards the end. Um, the, the 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 um, that project was about publishing um, budgets, um, UN budgets, to show um, uh, money flows across projects. Because the problem was that it was it was it was um, um, uh, siloed to some extent, and and the people involved didn't have the the visibility that they required. Um, <laughs> so we we we. we uh, get these um, uh, um, CSV dumps from uh, uh, you know stored stored database procedures from different departments, um, and then uh, munch them all into Plone. And that that was really a terrible use of Plone. Um, <laughs> it was you know to, to to make it work, you know, uh, you have to be very incremental and do things batched and. Um, uh, but they, that didn't change that much, um, and it was, the system was really uh, simple at, at the at the base. So even though it was like slow and clunky, it was it was also very tunable and and um, uh, light lightweight in in, in code, hmm. really. Um, and also at that time, I think um, it was that was when I was started when I started doing a lot of that stuff the the presentation part of it in in Plomino, which was um, oh, yeah. Eric Breholt's um, web based. Um, um, uh, uh, layout and, and interaction programming um, uh, system. Oh, no, yes, so, very. Yeah, that was that was very big. Uh, a lot of people were using it. I remember looking at it and going, mm -hmm. "Okay, I learned how to use Plone. I learned how to develop in Plone. Now, what is this? It's like a different beast mm -hmm. within Plone. And then, of course, Plone mm -hmm. is within Zope. And then, uh, uh, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's this. It's this." Playground ecosystem thing, but that 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 was also, um, or uh, yeah, part of the 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 identity and 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 liability or problem of Plone really is, on um, it was a kind of a playground for mm -hmm. ideas, which is fine, but um, it, it it struggled with um, the um, line between product and playground. Um, and right. for people um, uh, whose thing it is, um, it's it um, uh, it's wide open and it and and it's their playground. They're working at every at, at every level of it. But for someone um, coming from outside, um, it's 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 always been um, uh, an, an an issue with Plone, and I think it just um, uh, compounded over the over the years, like right, right, right back at the start, you had to uh, understand Python and Zoop and, and Plone layers, and where you need to uh, realize that what you're seeing in in Zoop, what you're doing in Zoop, um, uh, is not going to work exactly that way in Plone. You have to do <laughs> things a bit differently in Plone, um, and then you've, but the, you're you're talking Plone, about you've got development level whereas from a user perspective plone is just beautiful you come in you log in yeah, right you have the right yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're off to the races and and that's i think that's why that use plone as a cms is just still hands down the best thing that's out there um but you're oh, right yeah. because plone was a playground for very smart people and at the time there wasn't really much else out there if you wanted to build something yeah that was going to run on the web you're talking about pearl CGI, PHP initially, you know, around the same time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there wasn't that much out there that was as powerful as Zoop and Plone. So, of course, everyone says, I need to do something. The only tool I have is this Zoop and Plone thing. Plone has turned me into such a curmudgeon. Um, I, I, I come across all these um, uh, uh, CM, I mean, uh, CMSs or CMS adjacent things. Um, like these days, there's the, uh, the, the the big hype is Notion, um, and there's various other things in that in that um, um, space as well. Um, and 
plunge just blows them out of the water um, in, 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 at, at every level. And, and at what it can do, its security model, um, it, uh, content types, um, how, uh, yeah, how all the things that you can do in it. Um, a lot of it is, is problem and workflow specifically. A lot of it is problems that Plone solved like 10, oh. 15 years ago. Oh, well, yeah, like 20 years ago now, over 20. Yeah. 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 It's like uh, 2001. So it's been 22 years. Well, it didn't. It didn't do everything out of the box, but no, right. <laughs> from day from day one. <laughs> yeah, you you're one of the things that I always um, I slap my forehead for is like you'll you'll drop you and I will have mess will exchange messages and then you'll say have you taken a look at this tool or look at that tool and I remember mm, at one of our one of the conferences we hung out so we hung out in Bucharest. Uh, I don't think you came to Boston, right? 2016. I, I was, I was. That's where I met uh, um, Chris Ewing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 my parent, my my parents were traveling in in America at that time. And I introduced we, uh, we um, I we, we had lunch with Chris Ewing and my parents. That, that was that was that was the the occasion of that. Of that so you were in Boston. My conference. gosh. All right. So yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. So what? 2017. I remember talking to you because we stayed at the Trainer Hotel in Barcelona. And we hung out and I remember lovely breakfast conversations with you. Um, but every time we meet, you say, have you tried this tool? Have you tried that tool? Mm -hmm. And that one of those meetings, you, you blew my mind because you're using, Tre well, let's say you were abusing Trello, <laughs> which is yeah. just supposed to be cards and you move the cards around and you can say a card is done or not. And you were doing crazy yeah. shit with it, and I. But you, you actually got it. That, it, it was, it was, it was, um, it, I, it was, it was kind of hard, hard to get it across to get someone to. Uh, I mean, a lot of the time that um, uh, if I started to talk about this stuff, people's eyes would glaze over within like thirty seconds. <laughs> it just looks like that, but. <laughs> you have not stopped uh, it's like a, a a pattern with you 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 love this you research tools you find tools you're always reading about tools and processes and you find these really cool things to do with them and like um now i'm blanking but you're doing some crazy stuff now for the the company you're working for now you're doing an uh, a certification um um what what what, what i what i um, I, I I I try to do the same the same kind of thing for this company that I that I did with Trello for the for the previous one, which is basically just to make um, the company transparent to itself, understandable to itself, to um, set up its processes in a, um, a, a tool that people use to look things up and use to get their work done, um, and that um, faces all the different stakeholders. Um, in the last company, it was. Um, uh, our clients, project managers in, in the US, and our developers on our side, for example. So whether it's 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 not just this is your 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 ticket list. It's also um, setting up a new project and all that stuff. Um, in the case of Trello, I could um, lean on on um, this Butler bot automation layer, which which made it possible. Um, the case of of, of Notion, um, there was never any um, proper uh, automation um, uh, built in um, at all, but it does have these really um, powerful relational tables that you can build a lot on. And um, if you set things up correctly, um, if you update something in the right place, you can let it see it flow through other tables. Um, so, um, and we've got some automation through Zapier. So. Yeah. So, for example, GitHub releases come in through Zapier. Then um, we, uh, uh, I've got, I've got a, a, a table of all repositories, software components. So releases belong to components. Um, they're scheduled for deployment. Um, um, a deployment impacts features. There's another table of features. We get feedback coming in from Slack, from uh, Service uh, Cloud, from um, uh, um, HubSpot. Um, that's synced into into Notion as well. Um, features are triaged and linked to personas and features, for example. 
uh, feedback is linked to features. So, so now when you've got a deployment of a release that impacts a feature, you can see who gave feedback on that feature. Um, you can see the meetings that you had with the person who gave the feedback or with, or with anyone else at the company who gave the feedback. Um, and you know, it, it all just sort of falls out. If you just start, of, start um, building these things and making those connections, then um, th this, this bigger web just, 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 just falls out. But um, it's still a really hard um, vision to, to no, I don't even want to call it a vision, but it, it's hard to, to, to get people to sort of get on board with it because sadly enough, um, uh, people get stuck in their, in their, in their silos a lot. And they, and they actually don't want to spend any time talking to um, other groups. So in this case, um, the engineering uh, team is interested in the deploys and the product team is int interested in the, in the feedback. Um, and um, to make people see, oh, this is, now we can actually see um, when, when um, uh, the, um, uh, the, 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 the um, feedback, um, gets processed into in, into into software and gets deployed. Um, we can see that from the deploy list. Um, it's people it's like oh, so it's, that they then they're not actually interested in going to see that. They they, they want someone to uh, write them a summary in a PowerPoint slide and something ah. presented to them every every. Well, you every know what you know what weeks. the tool is that you have to use now to do that. Uh, what no chat GPT. <laughs> Oh, oh my god everyone's yeah, using yeah, yeah. that it's like the bitcoin of yeah yeah right yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah okay yeah. wait so i'm gonna i'm gonna take us on a little bit of side trip here because one of the things i asked you was what advice would you give to your younger self do, do you remember what those three things were oh my god uh i, I don't remember what i wrote down well the first word was chill I... <laughs> I still I was, uh yeah. Do I need to read it out to you? You said, "Yeah, please just out. go ahead." It's, it's Chill gonna, the fuck it's... out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. The second one was commit. Okay, so I I understand the chill the fuck out because it's true. Yeah. Things will work out fine. But the yeah. the commit. Tell me about that. Um. Yeah. Um. I w I was um. I was always um, jumping from um, um, job to job and project to project and technology to technology. Um, I, w I always felt that um, I'm not really a developer. I'm not really this, I'm not really that. Um, I'm just sort of um, doing it uh, well enough to get by and looking for um, um, uh, something that, 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 that that I, that, that I might really, that I might really be, um, you know, and, um, 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 and say I look at someone, uh, at, 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 at an outfit like Juzi who, um, know very well what they do, what they focus on, what works for them and just make, uh, make sure that that, is taken care of and um, um, uh, sustainable and works well from year to year. Um, and I think that's that's uh, um, a, a, a solid legacy. And, so, and, and um, yeah, so at, at this point, I'm sort of I've gravitated away from 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 development, and I'm doing uh, a SOC two compliance preparation work and. Um, uh, um, I'm getting more into into uh, 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 vendor management and cybersecurity and stuff like that. And again, it's it's a uh, um, area that um, I um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of new for me. I just sort of get in, got into it because it's stuff that needs done at the company that I'm at, mm. and um, other people aren't doing it to to my satisfaction. You know that the advice that you would give to your younger self that the idea of trying to choose a path and sticking to it is something that's you know, it speaks to me a bit because I, I think i'm more like you uh mm -hmm. i haven't really found a a thing that i'm i'm really 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 super good at and i just kind of wander around and i try to be useful mm -hmm. 
and there's always something that needs to be done. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I think of that. So it, it means eh, it's a more interesting career in a sense, but it's maybe in some ways less fulfilling than just knowing you had this one path to, to what this one furrow to follow and you did it well. Right. But yeah. And, time, and it's, you know, it's, it, it's, it still pulls in other things. Um, you, it, it's, it's still adjacent to all kinds of other things, but um, <clears throat> um, I, I, I feel like I, 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 there's, there's, there's a level of depth and continuity that I lack. The other, the third thing that you said, advice to your younger self was index funds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But, but actually, really, this is why I, I've decided to bring it up. It's because it's not really index funds that would have made you rich. It's Bitcoin. So here we are laughing about chat GPT saying, it, oh, it's the Bitcoin of 2023. No, well, if you'd been doing the Bitcoin thing, no, no, no. For every for every person who who uh, you know cashed out in Bitcoin, there's um, thousand people who got fleeced, um, and and I and I and I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been the one um, cashing out on the on the on the top of the wave. You know, I was um, just reading about it. Guy. Maybe I would have. Been. I was reading about a guy in the news just recently. He got I don't know. I think he finally got caught for something. But he yeah. was one of the early miners, and it used to be. I knew a guy I worked with thirty years ago who had a Linux box in his basement and he was just mining Bitcoin. It was like mining a teeny little amount every day, but yeah, yeah. it added up. And if he'd hung yeah. on to it, he would be uh, well set. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but seriously, um, uh, I um, it, uh, didn't sort of um, take fin personal financial management seriously until way too late in my life, really. Um, and as long as there's money in the bank, I'm like, okay, that's 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 that's, that's enough to worry about. Um, yeah, uh, but I, th I think of the stories that you've told me already, the experiences you've lived, the places you've been already. I mean, my gosh, um, you know, the places you visit. You know, you go on a 40-hour bus trip and you go visit some far-off location that is beautiful. Yeah. And wow, what a life! Yeah, that was that was that was, that was this last. Um, Songkran, um, going up to um, Nonghai Nong overnight in the north of, north, northeast of Thailand and from there to the capital um, and from there all the way down south along the Mekong um, uh, past um, Paksan to Takek um, <clears throat> and um, uh, 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 joining Songkran celebrations all, uh, along the way um, and um, <laughs> And reading uh, Rich's stock novels on the bus on the way down, um, hard-boiled uh, crime uh, novels from the '60s, um, while um, uh, in this in this no, no aircon bus with with a row of plastic seats down the center aisle and and live chickens and stuff in the bus, <laughs> um, and I was just amazed at how how how. Uh, um, um, well behaved all the kids on the bus were no one no, no one was 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 crying or um, being difficult and 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 that's that's not unusual people are very um gracious and and patient john thank you very much it's always fun to talk to you i'm glad we got a chance to do this again and well i'd like to keep doing it so you know stay tuned so you have Absolutely. to tell us some more hardcore stories. That'd be, you've got a lot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know if I, uh, how many I, I, I should uh, tell on the record. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. John Jordan, longtime planista, living in Bangkok, living the life. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Bye-bye.